Alrighty, we've got another Vintage Cube team draft with some awesome new additions. Primarily, Numa the Nummy. So, Kenji has joined the ranks of the drafters. Love it. This draft discord keeps expanding and adding great folks. Uh, I am not on Kenji's team, though. In fact, I'm even passing to him. It's myself, Slacks, and Hank battling against Eomatic. Uh, actually, Slacks is roommate. Kenji and uh, Team Jbro. So, great squads and, uh, as always, a great format. And actually, a great first pick, White Plume Adventure. This card is just busted. Look, I've had my qualms about initiative, but we're playing with it. Everyone here knows what it does. My main problem with initiative is the like kind of barrier it puts up, uh, the the sort of like complexity cost. But with all these experienced drafters, we know the draw. The other good cards are Wheel of Fortune, Grist, and Renin Six and Balance. No Ely Cassis in this draft, so the balance might go a little later. I first picked Wheel in my last draft. This time, though, I am going to take White Plume and uh, ship Kenji a Wheel, a Balance, a Grist, maybe a Zealous Conscripts, depending on uh, where he's at. Oh, no, disaster. I could have gone Wheel into Underworld Breach. <laughs> uh, do I want to take the Underworld Breach anyway? Well, if I didn't take Underworld Breach, what would I take here? The problem is the next best card is like Snapcaster Mage. I'm not a big Coalition Relic fan, to be honest. I think... Coalition Relic is expensive enough that it doesn't ramp you except to fives and sixes. You pay three mana for this and it gets blown up. It's just a huge investment. I don't know. There's also Ophiomancer, which I do like, but I don't think I'm going to second pick here. Honestly, I might still just take the Breach. Snapcaster and Breach have similar uh, needs. Like, Snapcaster is a little bit wider. Any number of cheap spells work with Snapcaster. Breach specifically wants, like, Lion's Eye Diamond, Brain Freeze. But they're both powerful. I guess mm, I guess Snapcaster's still probably better. I might wheel Soul Herder out of this pack and could be white blue. Yeah, all right, all right. I've talked myself into Snapcaster. I hope I don't regret it. Kind of do because there's a Fable in this pack. There's also a Mana Leak. Wow, this must have been a pretty solid pack to have both Fable, Mana Leak, and then Kaito Wasteland still in the pack. I can disregard the Snapcaster and take Fable. It's not like Fable Breach is like a crazy good combo. They're both just good red cards, and they both kind of work in similar ways. I don't really want to pass Fable. I think Fable is pretty busted. I love Mana Leak too, but I think I'm just going to take the Fable here and work out which way we're going. I mean, maybe I don't play the Snapcaster. Banish him to the Shadow Realm. Sorry, Tiago. But uh, <clears throat> as good as Mana Leak is with Snapcaster, and had the Fable not been there, I would have slammed the Mana Leak. It wouldn't have been close. But Fable's there. Okay, so now I can take Mystic Confluence, Council's Judgment, or a Braid. Don't think the Raven Inspector is as good as Council's Judgment. <sighs> I just passed Mana Leak. It kind of makes me want to take Mystic Confluence, because I think that's the best card in this pack. And I could just be Jeskai Control. I just think a Braid's a lot more replaceable. Council's Judgment is very good. But I think Mystic Confluence is better. All right, I'm going to slam the Confluence here take that oh no now i can take counterspell and even though i took fable over mana leak fable's still just a busted card and now i'm cutting blue after passing mana leak i don't know i don't know enough about how kenji drafts and especially in a competitive setting to know which direction he's going but uh i don't mind passing a mix of different colors passing up on resto blade splicer incinerate i think that's fine blue seems to be open blue's a good color if it's open that's for sure what I might wheel Sacred Foundry out of this pack, too, or Incinerate. Because there's Blade Splicer, Thief of Sanity, Wood Elves, Resto, and then three different lands. So basically, given that I'm interested in Resto, Blade Splicer, Sacred Foundry, Incinerate, it's pretty likely that those aren't four of the five cards taken, given that there's two other good cards in, in Wood Elves and Thief and two other good lands, plus even a Nurturing Peatland if someone's that direction. Okay, next up... Whoa. Arid Mesa and Scalding Tarn? And Fiery Confluence? Oh my, yeah, this is tough. There's also Pestermite, but uh, I think I probably have to take Scalding Tarn. I love Fiery Confluence, but my power level is already through the roof. Mystic Confluence, Counterspell, White Plume Fable, Snapcaster is already great. So I'm going to take Scalding Tarn and not really get anything too relevant back out of this pack. But... This is a really good Jeskai start, I will say that. And maybe I'm red-blue splashing white plume. The reason I took Tarn is I have three blue cards, one red card, one right card, so I'm pretty sure I should just take the blue fetch. 
Okay, Zealous Conscripts Wield. There's also Brawl and Young Pyromancer. I did just pass a Pestermite. Haven't seen Kiki or anything. Mm, yeah, I'll take the Conscripts. Conscripts is good. I do like Pyromancer as well. But I feel like Zealous Conscripts has some pretty good outs. Also, if like Restoration Angel wheels, Zealous Conscripts Resto is kind of nice. Okay, Soul Herder did wheel. So Soul Herder Conscripts, how good of a combo is that? Use Conscripts their thing. Nah, it doesn't really do much. There's also Monastery Mentor. Mentor is kind of nice, given that I have Snapcaster and three spells already. But Soul Herder White Plume is busted. Also, actually, Soul Herder blinking the Fable tokens kind of cool. All right, I'll, I'll go with the Soul Herder. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can draft something along those lines. I'm not sure if that's the, the way we're going to want to go, but I think it could be interesting. I also have Fable of the Mirror Breaker... Like, if I can get the Reflection of Kiki Jiki into play, copying Zealous Conscripts is really strong. Okay, him wield, but there's been tons of blue cards, so I wouldn't be, I'm wouldn't. i not that surprised if no one's really in black. I'd probably just take Gideon Jura. I could hate the him to Turok, but I haven't passed a lot of black to Kenji. And then there's also, like, Nissa is a pretty good card. Gideon's a pretty good card. I don't really care about Bolus of Citadel or Explorer Oath of Nissa. Scrub is also fine, but... I'll just take Gideon Jura, and that's going to go on the sideboard. Wow, Council's Judgment wields so did Bonfire and Thraben Inspector. I guess I take Council's Judgment here, and then maybe if the Zealous is in the sideboard, I'm blue-white. Splash, I, I consider taking Council's Judgment the first time. It's also really good with Snapcaster. Okay. Had I not taken the Fable, I would basically just have a blue-white deck here, but I really am not sad about passing uh, a busted... Uh, red or like not passing a busted red card like fable is a, is a broken card breach and wheel of fortune probably are in the same person's pile i wonder if it is kenji it could be i would like that sacred foundry to wheel it did oh this is close though because the blade splicer is also still there so temple garden went but sanctum didn't neither did sacred foundry or incinerate red seems pretty open I like Blade Splicer and it's good to Soul Herder, but I do have three three drops. Let's just take the Sacred Foundry. It's just the perfect land for the setup. And then now I can probably just take Avacyn, pass a Raging Ravine and a Lear. Yeah, Avacyn is a pretty good one. Uh, I'm not going to play Baral. I guess I'm not that worried about passing Kenji a just decent black removal spell. I'm going to take the Baral in case he did take Wheel of Fortune Underworld Breach. Baral is very good in that deck. I guess I'll take Hero of Blade Hold and maybe I'll... I mean, getting a last pick Skrelve and a Hero of Bladehold, I could just do something like this, you know. Oh, new new picture on Wrath of God. Uh, probably just take Jace the Mind Sculptor here. Jace is still good. There's also a Plateau, which I could wheel. Winds of Abandon. I might be the only white drafter, in which case I'm in good position here. But I'm going to slam Jace. And I'll basically be blue-white, potentially splashing Fable. Okay. The Blade Splicer pick was close. Because, I, I mean, I don't know if I'm going to play Soul Herder either. I don't know if I'm going to play this Hero of Blade Holder Skrull, v, <laughs> for that matter. But I also think red is fairly open. I could have picked up a decent amount of red cards. So I'm thinking red might be pretty good uh, to be in as a splash. We'll see. This pack... This pack is pretty mediocre. The best cards in the pack are Reanimate and Animate Dead, which further cements in my mind that Kenji's not playing black. But I'm probably going to take Flicker Wisp. Flicker Wisp works, and then I could just maybe be the Soul Herder deck. And maybe Wheel Rift and Cloudskate. I don't care about Badlands, Breeding Pool. These lands don't really help me. All right, I'll take the Flicker Wisp. I could take the Cloudskate and try to wheel the Flicker Wisp, but I think Flicker Wisp is a much more powerful card. So I'd rather start with Flicker Wisp here. I've just found Flicker Wisp to be incredible. Three mana, three one that flickers any permanent. There's or yours, kills tokens, just does everything. All right, now there's a Vendillion click. We're getting a lot of three drops, which is another reason that take, not taking the Blade Splicer isn't that big of a deal. I, I'm going to take V-Click over Arc Trail and snuff out. Pass a bunch of black back to Eomatic here. But Eomatic did pass a really late him, so who knows? Maybe no one was drafting black, but people can always switch in. Whoa, the dog just scared the living Cheons out of me. Jules. The problem is the dog still has a stupid cone on because she just will not leave her paw alone. So she, the, the vet said to like keep it on for like a week, which means she just like runs into things and just makes like tons of noise. Uh, yes. 
I love the dog. The dog is the best, but also the dog is just unreal. Um, what do we got here? Oh, I do like Unholy Heat. I also like Marsh Flats. Yeah, I'm going to take Marsh Flats here. My colors are pretty intense, and uh, having another fetch is going to really go a long way in, in helping cast them. I don't mind missing out on Unholy Heat. Honestly, I... I and now I'm going to be able to play the Fable because I have three lands that can cast it. So I guess the the Sacred Foundry was a, ended, ended up pretty nicely. But oh, now make that four. Definitely taking Flooded Strand. This is another tri land. Just perfect. Over Thieving Skydiver. And I might even wheel Karmic Guide. Tons of black. Maybe someone's got to have moved into black. I hope it was my teammate. But yeah, I think uh, not taking Unholy Heat is not a big loss. My, this mana looks really good. I have two tri lands in Flooded Strand and Scalding Tarn. And then... Marsh Flats is currently just red-white, but obviously that could change as well. Uh, the man is getting good enough that I'll probably play the Zealous Conscripts. I'm not sure about Hero of Bladehold and Skrelv yet. I could still be on the more controlling side here, but we'll have to see. If I pick up some good low-drop white creatures in this pack, <coughs> excuse me, then uh, I could lean more aggressive for sure. Um... This is pick five. I get one more pick here. What am I looking for? Something like Path, Swords. Maybe if that Winds of Abandoned Wield would be kind of nice. I already passed Mana Leak. I feel like uh, Kenji is playing blue. Which makes me feel good about taking Confluence and Counterspell. But I haven't... Besides the first pick, Jace, and then like the third pick, Vendillion Click, I haven't seen much in the way of blue. I do need some more cheap spells for Snapcaster. I have Counterspell, Council's Judgment are both pretty good. Mystic Confluence is good but expensive. What, what I could really use, honestly, is like Preordain or Ponder, that sort of thing, because that makes Snapcaster a lot more consistent. Okay, what do we got? Oh, Reprieve. Perfect. Cheap Disruptive Spell, good with Snapcaster. Passing up on Cathar Commando and Showdown. Showdown also often wheels because you have to be not only two colors, but have a low curve slash have a lot of creatures for Showdown to be good. So actually, it's not even the best Showdown deck here, but you know, though Flicker Wisping show Showdown, that's actually pretty good. Yeah, I don't know which of these five drops I'm going to play. I also have a Gideon Jura over here if I want it. And I have plenty of playables. That's just rarely a concern. So that was pick six. See if I wheel anything good. Having three fetches of my colors feels pretty pretty good, though. Because uh, now I have Reprieve, Counterspell, Council's Judgment, Jace, Mystic as a pretty good spell curve. Again, I need more cheap cards because I have all threes. Right now, this Soul Herder is not looking fantastic. Well, there's the Winds of Abandon. There's also the Plateau and a Red Blast. All those are, like, enticing. Shatter Skull Smashing, not so much. But it's going to be pretty hard not to take Wrath of God here. This is a pretty good Wrath of God deck. Like, I don't have tons of creatures. I've got a lot of spells. My mana is good enough that I can pass on Plateau. And honestly, it's not a 0 percent at Plateau and or Winds doesn't wheel. But I think Wrath is going to be pretty good in this style of deck. Like, this, this honestly makes me lean towards playing Gideon, not playing Zealous Conscripts. Currently, this Soul Herder is not making it in. So Riftwing didn't wheel. Animate Dead did. So did Badlands and Dire Fleet Daredevil. I don't think I want to pass Animate Dead to Eomatic. Even though they passed me the late him, I fed them a Reanimate and a Snuff Out already. Kind of concerned about doing that. Plus, I do have this Marsh Flats, and I have two other fetches. It's not inconceivable that I could end up playing this. I just think this is so much the best card in this pack. Oh, then there's the Snuff Out. I guess I'll just take the Snuff Out. Okay. I mean, I could also be Esper, Splashing Fable. I don't know. Well, we'll see. But both those cards are really good. Oh, look, there's a Godless Shrine. Now with Godless Shrine, that adds an additional two sources. I can't fetch it with Tarn, but it makes Flooded Strand into black. And, of course, it is a black card. Marsh Flats already was black. Yeah, that, that actually seems fine. So now I could take Karmic Guide or go for the Throat. Honestly, I might just take go for the Throat. It's so good with Snapcaster. I don't have that many creatures for Karmic Guide. Look, I don't really think Bitter Blossom's that good. I know there are games where it can be good. Overall, I don't think it's great. My curve's a little too high for Dark Confront, but I actually like Cathar Commando a lot. So I'm going to take Cathar Commando. Ooh, wow. There's a Concealed Courtyard, but Winds of Abandon is a card I've actually been pretty impressed with, so I'm going to take that. 
it's not as good as Path to Exile, but there are situations where you just pay six and wipe their whole board. And plague with, you, sorry, you Plague Win them. You don't even lose your board. And that's really good. Okay, so Kenji's definitely playing blue, which is actually fine, because that means pack three, I'm going to cut him really hard. And right now I'm playing Fable the Mirror Breaker off of four red sources without costing myself anything. All right, Hoguk has got to go. Got to go, Guck. <laughs> um, yeah, this is 18 playables. So as always, fine on playables. I'm basically blue-white splashing right now three black cards and one red card, but my mana cooperates because I actually just have all the right fetches and a couple duels. Okay. The one thing I am missing is power. I don't have any of that. Still don't. Uh, so there's Underground Sea and Hallowed Fountain. Those are both good. Spell Pierce also great. I do like Skyclave Apparition. I'm kind of wondering if Skyclave Apparition might wheel. The reason I say that is there's both Gideon and Skyclave and they're both good. No one really appears to be playing Heavy White except me. Kind of makes me want to just take Underground Sea and just lock up the mana completely. I think that's better than Spell Pierce. And I actually think it's better than Hallowed Fountain. Hmm. Let's see. Because, look, if I take Underground Sea, it adds a black source and a blue source intrinsically and then makes Marsh Splats into a blue source. If I take Hallowed Fountain, it adds a blue and a white source, but doesn't... Oh, it adds Marsh Splats as well. Actually, in that case, I should probably take Hallowed Fountain. The only... On the other hand, though, Kenji's probably not playing white, but he's also probably not playing black. I think he's playing blue-red is the most likely outcome. But also, Hallowed Fountain is slightly more likely to wheel. Uh, let's go Underground C. I'm not sure on that one. I was like, oh, is that Fable? No, that's another, <laughs> a different card. I already have the Fable. All right, now I just take Bloodstained Mire, which actually made it so it worked out that I took Underground C. And now my mana's perfect. There's just no cards I'm going to play here. I hate Oblivion Ring. I don't care about passing Season Pyromancer that much, especially since there's also a Goldspan Dragon and both those cards are great. All right, I love Lingering Souls, but I've got to take Remand. Oh, there's Smuggler's Copter too. Man, this is just not a great Smuggler's Copter deck. Remand is just too good. Remand is such a good card. All right, we'll take Remand over Preordain here. Not in the Turok business. Urza is a good card. It's good with Flicker Wisp. It's good with this Soul Herder that I have in the sideboard here. There's also Mother of Runes, which is just a strong card in general. But I think I'm okay just taking Urza. It's not the best Urza deck, but I'm not I'm not that into Luris. I have Snapcaster, Cathar Commando. Anime Did is actually a great card with Luris, but I'm not taking Ragnar and Triumph. I'm not I'm basically done taking lands at this point. Yeah, I think I just take Urza. It's also the best blue card. I don't really want to cast past Kenji a great blue card here. Does Soul Herder make the cut now that I have Luris? Or sorry, Urza. White Plume, Vendillion Click. I mean, Snapcaster Mage doesn't really count. Oh, I guess I'll just take Treachery now. I'm not an Urza Saga deck. It's a late Urza Saga, unfortunately, but this is actually like a pretty good Treachery deck. Just, I have a lot of cheap interaction. It can get me to five mana. And then I Treachery. This is 21 playables, and I'm, I've am i got Hero of Bladehold, Skrelv, Soul Herder, Brawl. Well, this is a Legacy Cube deck. I don't believe there's a single card here that's not legal in... Legacy. <laughs> uh, oh, that's not true. White Plume Adventure. Banned in Legacy. Um, but I didn't open any power or see any power, so it's not like I had a, any, any options there. It's not like I passed those cards. Uh, can't play Leovold. That is the best card. I'm not going to put a double black card in my deck. I, do, I think that that would be a mistake. I might just take Wedding Announcement. I think this card's actually fine. Don't care about... Passing an upheaval. I haven't seen any big artifact mana. The card's hard to play. Also, everyone's seen this pack now. There's two good double black cards, so yeah, let's just take the wedding announcement. Skyclave and Gideon both wield Sir Hallowed Fountain. All right. Well, I'm going to take the Skyclave, and now over Factor Fiction, I think. Yeah, Skyclave is fantastic. And I have Jace, Mystic Confluence, Treachery as kind of chunky cards. Maybe I'll wield a Gideon. Um... Guess I can take the O-Ring. There's some matchups where it's good. I don't think Isika's Chariot. I don't care about passing that one. Especially there's an Escape and a Woodfall Primus, whatever. All right. Is the Soul Herder good enough now with Skyclave? It doesn't bounce Wedding Announcement. So I've got Skyclave, 
Vendillion Click, White Plume, Urza, Minor Outs with Fable, and I don't know. Oh, Lingering Souls. Oh, man, I love GTA 2, but I think Lingering Souls is, is really, really good. And again, if no one took GTA, it's kind of, I wonder what's going on there. So this is 25. I'm probably not going to play the Soul Herder still. Lingering Souls is perfect for the style of deck, though. I also have two two good Planeswalkers. Lingering Souls is good with those. It's also good with Wedding Announcement, because eventually I get a plus one, plus one to all your creatures. It's good with White Plume, because it makes it really easy to keep initiative. This is not the best GTA deck. I could cut Archangel Avacyn if I wanted to cut a card, because I need to cut one. And I also might wheel a card or two. Winds of Abandon, Counterspell, Reprieve, Animate Dead, Go for the Throat, Council's Judgment, Jace. Yeah, this is... A pretty solid deck. I like the mana in the deck too. Because I can just play no mountains and I have five red sources. That's plenty. No swamps and I have six black sources for three black cards and one red card. Plus the, the treasures off fable kind of count. And then, oh, well, I have white plume. I should probably play one swamp. I'm not going to white plume for a mountain. But remember, the first level of this gets me... Uh, a land, oh, a basic land. So I will take Mother of Runes. Though. Mother of Runes is busted. Passing two good green cards, a batter skull, and a Turok. No, no one wants any of those cards. It's weird. So now I do need to cut a card. Oh, I still need to cut. Well, no, now I need to cut two cards. Oh, Adeline. Adeline's also good. I think it's better than Giver of Runes. And then maybe I maybe I just bin the wedding announcement. It's good. Wedding announcement's good with lingering souls, but so is Adelaide. Do I want glass pool mimic? I don't really have anything good to copy. <laughs> I guess copying white plume, flicker wisp, copying fable. I don't think I'm gonna play usher of the fallen. It doesn't seem like what I want to do. I'll just nah I'll take the glass pool sure whatever. All right, I will play Gideon though. Pass the last pick, Damnation. All right, I don't think anyone's playing Mono Red. All right, this was this was solid. I think for what we saw, it worked out pretty nicely, and I don't regret the Fable over Mana Leak pick the way this turned out. Alrighty, not too many hard cuts here. I ended up cutting Archangel, Avacyn, Winds of Abandon, and Adeline. Playing 16 lands plus Glass Bowl Mimic, so really 17 lands. And uh, still playing the Wrath of God, as well as the Mother of Runes. Bunch of white creatures, some removal. Well, I think this is totally fine. My teammates are on blue-red spells. Got the mana leak and the breach. Which is nice, plus open an ancestral. That's Hank's deck. And then uh, Jesse's on like a five-color green deck. Playing against Team Jaybro here. I'll keep this hand. It's in need of a white mana, but I have pretty good mana. And uh, I think... Uh, one white mana gets me to reprieve. I have a gopher to throw it already. And then two lands get me to snapcaster at one of those two. And then, of course, Wrath and Gideon. Well, I guess I'm glad I'm playing against green. Those, those cards are both quite good against green. Shield rid the apocalypse. Okay, that's actually something I'm kind of happy to see. Because I have a gopher to throw it that can kill shield rid easily. So that's already a good exchange lined up. Oh, Jund. Jund value. White mana would be nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a disaster. Okay. Kaito Shizuki is going to mess me up. Also, cast off Oath of Nissa. Very cute. Uh, oh wow, just straight up drawing a card, okay. Sure. No, usually you make the ninja first, but I guess that's not what we're doing here. Alright, there's a plane, so that's better than nothing. Um, I guess I'm probably going to reprieve Shieldred this turn. Seems like a reasonable play to make. Oh, Minsk and Boo. I guess I'll be re reprieving that. That's a lot scarier. Okay. And now I'm going to make a token. Sure. Draw. Marsh Flats. Um, I'm actually going to cast 
my fable here. And the reason I'm doing that is I have snuff out for the Minsk and Boo token. I have Gopher to Throat. I have Snapcaster. I have Gideon. I have some pretty good plays this turn. Let's see what uh, Mr. Brustoff has for us here. So let's say he goes Minsk and Boo, resolves. I don't have a counter spell. Okay. Make make a boo. A boo hoo. Attack with both. Plus Kaito to draw a card, I guess, is the, the likely outcome here. And next turn, what my plan is to go snuff out on the boo, attack Minsk and Boo down to two with the Goblin Shaman, pass with all my mana up. Next turn, I go go for to throw the boo token, Snapcaster, reprieve the shield dread. So this is kind of predicated on Mr. Jbro here not casting two spells next turn. But if he doesn't, don't hate the position I'm in. So I guess his question now is, does he want to attack with the boot token or the ninja or both? I mean, you're going to want to attack with one because that gives Kaito extra extra juice. I think attack with both is just right. Um, though actually I might just take four damage. I, I take five down to 12 and then I snuff out down to eight, but it stops the boot token next turn as well. That's probably worth it actually. Okay. No. Ooh. Don't like seeing spells. All right, draw. Oh, Gideon Ally of Zendikar is interesting. I would like to use this. I'm going to discard Wrath of God. I think that's the only one I can afford to discard. I, I can't really discard. Like, I wish I discarded Island now, but I don't think I'm supposed to do that. All right. So now what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to attack... Minsk and Boo and make a token, and then I'm going to play Gideon and make a knight. And my plan is to have Gopher to Throat plus Snuff Out up. So Snuff Out can kill the Boo token, that's going to be a 7-7, and then Gopher to Throat kills the Shieldred. And I'm, again, hoping that he plays the card I know about, because I'm kind of making my plans based on that. But drawing a 4-mana Gideon instead of a 5-mana Gideon is nice, because now I can do Gideon plus Gopher to Throat, which I think is better than Snap Reprieve, because that... That lines it up for Snap Go for the Throat instead. All right. Gideon Ally of Zendikar. Make a Knight. And that's perfect too because the Gideon can threaten to attack the uh, Planeswalkers here. Okay, I think I'm doing okay here, but obviously being behind the eight ball on Kaito and Minsk is, all, is tricky, but this is just shaping up to be a good game. There's a lot of a lot of cards. I mean, this is a big, you know, the cube has tons of great cards in it. There's a lot of things that uh, Jaybro could play that would just completely demolish me. <laughs> but Shieldred's a pretty good card. It's pretty tempting to play it. So really not surprised if that's what ends up being cast this turn. Um, attacking first. Okay. Attack me with both. I'll snuff out the boo. And take one. And then now it could sack a creature to deal X, but doesn't have any good creatures in play to sacrifice. So that's not a big deal. Maybe he was hoping to go post combat Shieldred sack Minsk and Boo to deal four or something. So drawing before playing Shieldred, so missing out on two life, but of course seeing the card you draw first, maybe playing a better card. Okay, activate Minsk and Boo for no gain because there's no targets for it. Come on, just play the Shieldred. If you play Shieldred, I've got you covered. Talisman, sure. That can definitely lead to a Shieldred play. Okay. And Binding the Old Gods. Okay, that's a lot less good. All right, my Gideon is dead. And no plays now. So now 
I guess I'm gonna go for the throat the Arbor Elf here. Because I need to kill Minsk and Boo. Yeah, good play, not playing Shieldred. Jibro, in fact, did not walk into the things I was hoping he would walk into. <laughs> I'm gonna untap a land. You gonna do something else? I could go for a, a remand. Mystic Confluence. Those would both be great. Because next turn I'm gonna have access to seven mana. So if I can draw a relevant two mana play, I can go Gideon plus two mana play. And I would not mind that. I do have to save the Snapcaster for Go for the Throat, because if I don't kill Shieldred, it's just gonna kill me very quickly. I am gonna get a Fable token though. Okay, on top of land, sure. Draw. Lingering Souls, interesting. Um, attack Minsk and Boo. Minsk and Boo down. Yeah, let's just slam Gideon here and kill the ninja token. The reason I like doing that is uh, I like being able to prevent Kaito from drawing a card for free. Okay, Kaito, uh, Binding, it's a forest. I'm threatening to kill the Kaito here next turn. And I'm hoping... Wow, I actually have enough mana next turn. If j Bro goes Shieldred, pass, I go upkeep, Snapcaster, go for it, throw the Shieldred. I then have Reflection of Kiki-Jiki to copy the Snapcaster Mage and cast Reprieve, which is pretty sick to have up. Okay. And then Gideon's threatening to come kill Kaito. So are the, my tokens, I guess. And I have a Lingering Souls so I can clog the board if I need to. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this game. I, I feel like I've gotten to make some good tempo positive plays here. Courser of Crufix. Hole Breacher. All right, good to know about that one. Land and then Shieldred. I'm going to assume it's Shieldred. Yeah. All right. Cool, cool. Upkeep. Snapcaster. Target, go for the throat, go for the throat, the shieldred. Draw, glass pool mimic. I can copy any of my creatures. I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, Hole Breacher is coming. This is going to get Death Touch next turn. Let's just go Gideon. Attack Kaito with all three. Let's eat a goblin or... No, you know, I'm just going to attack Kaito like this. Look, if Jaybro wants to sack a Courser to keep Kaito alive, that's fine with me. If Jaybro wants to keep the Courser alive, that also makes total sense. I'm not interested in throwing away a goblin token. I want, I want to get my free card. I don't want to trade a one-for-one. One. <laughs> because if I attack with these three, it's a forced one-for-one. One. I'm also not going to play Glass Pole Mimic as a land. Because... Uh, I want to save that to copy something. The one thing that's a little awkward is Hole Breacher does make Reprieve less enticing. Because let's say Jabro plays a four or five mana spell and I want to Reprieve it. All right, we're keeping Kaito around? Sure. That's fine with me. But if Hole Breacher's in play when this resolves, then Jabro gets a token and I don't draw a card. That said, I still think I'm going to leave up Reprieve rather than play Lingering Souls. It feels like that's better. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy killing either of these things. I really am. And if uh, Jaybro doesn't play anything I need to Reprieve, I can end of turn make a Goblin Shaman. And I think that's reasonable too. The other thing about attacking with these is Courser eats the Goblin and then can attack Gideon back. And that doesn't seem like what I want to have happen. All right, let's just pass. Courser is going to reveal... Mm -hmm. Thief of Sanity, all right. Courser's got Death Touch. Demonic Tutor, okay. Guess I'm glad I have Reprieve up. So it's Hole Breacher and an Unknown in hand. So if you DT for a three mana spell, you can Hole Breacher in response to Reprieve or just play the spell twice. Neither of those is ideal. 
If you DT for a more expensive spell, I can delay it by a turn. Not much after that. Jabro also has a lot of life because I've done a lot of attacking with Planeswalkers this game. Okay. I guess I hope this is kind of expensive. Oh, and hit a land on top and he's drawing another land. Okay. Hopefully this isn't a four mana spell and now it gets to whole breach, but... I mean, I guess I hope it's like a five mana spell. <laughs> the, only, the only problem with that is uh, I don't really want... This to be a sick card. Wither Bloom Command. Minus three, minus one. And I lose two life. Hand is Hole Breacher and nothing else. Mm, I guess I copy Snapcaster on Reprieve. Is that good? There's two cards in hand. The thing is, if I copy Snapcaster on Reprieve... I don't care about going to five. If I copy Snapcaster and Reprieve, Jabro can play whatever the last card is without fear. Yeah, I th think I'd just do that. I'm giving up a little bit of value here, but I think that's okay. I'm not going to Reprieve the Witherbloom command. I think that's fine. And then he's just going to pass. That's fine too. Okay, the courser is certainly not attacking. Okay, snapcaster down, draw. Cathar oh, Commando is actually really nice. Uh, can activate, can't activate Lava Claw right now. Hmm. I'm actually kind of want to just kill the courser now so I can attack with these things. I'm at five. I guess I probably just want to plus Gideon. Oh, I want to copy Cathar Commando with Reflection. That is actually what I want to do. That costs two minutes to play Cathar, one to copy, one to use, which means I could Lingering Souls. Let's go Cathar Commando. Copy it. Kill the courser with the copy here. I'm not attacking with Gideon here. I'm gonna attack with these things for four, and make a token. Uh, plus two the Gideon. And then now I think I'd rather lingering souls than cast glass pole mimic. And this leaves up enough mana to cast, uh, to sack Thar Commando if I need to. Okay, his whole breacher. So Jabro's got one card I don't know about, is drawing a forest this turn. So, it's looking pretty good. I mean, I don't know what that last card is. I hope it's not too good. <laughs> whole breacher also has to attack. Oh, animating Lava Claw? Sure. I think I just trade the two tokens for that and let Gideon get hit down to three. Fine with that. And you play your forest. All right, what's your last card? Damnation? Oh, Grief. All right, that goes with the Glass Pole Mimic. All right, all right. We're in great shape now. That was a good draw. Um, let me kill the whole breacher. I'm just gonna attack with these two. No, I'm gonna leave the knight back. I can I can afford to play a little slower, I think here. And let's lingering souls. And I still have Confluence and Up and Copy with Reflection. And Confluence probably counters anything here. Okay, end of turn. Let's copy Cathar Commando. It's a nice little combo here. Um, Jibra's on 15. Just gonna make 
Gideon into a lad here. Attack with these oh, and Gideon for sure. Uh, this is six, 10, 14. Oh, but if I attack with everything, oh, should I have just, I guess I just attack with reflection to, I guess I should have just copied a goblin shaman. I kind of didn't realize I was gonna just be sending with everything <laughs> till I did. All right, this puts J bro to one. Oh, I guess even copying Cathar Commando would be lethal. This is like what happens when you don't start your turn and like plan your whole turn, you just kind of do it piece by piece, which normally I don't do, obviously, but in this case I did. All right, well, I definitely want Zealous Conscripts. It's pretty good against Planeswalkers. O-Ring is two. I'm just scared of O-Ring. Mm, Animate Dead seems like it's fine. Flickerous, Lingering Souls. Wrath I don't like as much against Planeswalkers. Do I want... Adeline, Wedding Announcement. Hero of Bladehold is also pretty good against Planeswalkers, as is Archangel Avacyn. <clears throat> Maybe I take out Gideon Jura. I think I'd rather have the more assertive play. Mother of Rune still seems fine. That card is just a good card. I guess I could take out Urza. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Nine blue, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten white. Yeah, no, that's it. That all seems fine. All right, <clears throat> let's see how this goes. <clears throat> how this goes is to six cards. All right, I will keep this hand and Put glass pool mimic on the bottom, I think. Since I would just be playing it as land anyway, I'd rather just have basics out. No Oath of Niss. Oh. It's not like that's like the best card ever, but it's pretty good in Jabro's deck. It fixes it fixes mana pretty nicely. <laughs> nice zealous conscripts. Uh haha, <laughs> new mod is blue red. That's exactly what I thought. Fertile ground, okay. All right, we're doing some ramp in here. What I'm kind of hoping, I'll wait a bit. I can get a flooded strand or a sacred foundry off that flooded strand, so that's going to be pretty nice. What I'm hoping is that I can combine go for the throat and animate dead for some good value here. Grief. I guess I will remand the grief. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get to. Uh, I need to draw counter spell. Oh. All right, V-click is nice. That at least does something. Mm -hmm. What I would like to do is counter the grief and then animate dead it. All right, let's, let's see what you got. Well, we're taking Minsk and Boo and leaving you with grief, Alrun's Epiphany, Witherbloom, yeah. All right. j -Bro's deck is good. This is this is gonna be good some good battles here. I really don't like that he's gonna to get to see the zealous conscripts either. Cause that uh makes the zealous pack a lot less of a punch. We're getting like a swamp. Are you just gonna go for the grief here? No, we're gonna do the wood elves into Witherbloom play, setting up an Alrun's Epiphany. Some good ramp here. This matchup, I think, is tough. Witherbloom, haha, <laughs> discarding the Minsk and Boo, funny. So now I could just uh, animate dead the Vendillion click. I probably want to, because I think I think I actually really want to take the Auron's Epiphany out of J Bro's hand. I mean, we'll see. Hopefully there's not something better. Courser and Grief. So Alrun's Epiphany is zero mana, two one on flying draw card versus getting to play Grief and Courser. It's all kind of a nightmare. Maybe I just take the Grief. And then he goes Alrun's Epiphany, one, two, three. Yeah, next turn he goes Alrun's Epiphany, un attack for one, Alrun's Epiphany, untap, attack for three, play Courser. Then I get to go for to throw out the Courser. Grief would take go for the throat, presumably. Yeah, all right. I guess I'll take the grief. I, I don't really like 
this position. I just I, I'm just worried that uh, Courser plus Vista is just so much value. Okay. Well, if J Bro drew another four drop, this play makes a lot of sense. Ah, uh, this still makes sense. All right, so he's got Prismatic Vista, Aaron's Epiphany, X in hand. Okay. Ooh, what is X? Oh, suspending Alrun's Epiphany, sure. All right, let's get Sacred Foundry. I'm just going to pay the two life because I'm going to go for the throat the courser here. You're drawing Swamp, Cathar Commando, one, two. Hmm. I think I just get in there. <laughs> All right, you draw Swamp. You go Swamp, Al runs Epiphany. Yeah, right. We're basically in top deck wars now, but I'm, I think just playing the conscripts as a haster is what I wanted to do. Yeah, attack me down to 14, take an extra turn, hopefully brick on that turn, and then the board's technically like even. This trades for one bird, the other three trade for the Zealous. Any card Jaybro plays is going to blow this game open. But I also am going to get to play a card next turn. So, all right, no play, no play. All right, no play, no play. Oh, Glass Pool Mimic. All right. I'll play my land first, but choose Zealous Conscripts, steal the untapped bird. Oh, yeah, boy. Attack for nine, you're down to four. I'm not even gonna play a Cathar Commando to kill the the Fertile Ground because uh, I, I want the Cathar Commando to be a surprise. All right, well, that was a really good draw because instead of attacking for three, I attack for nine. Kaito Shizuki, sure. Probably just draw because, again, most good cards will kind of break the game open here. Not Shieldred, please. Thief of Sanity. Okay, that one's actually fine. I can just leave back Vendillion Click. Um, I think I just play the Cathar Commando here. It's not like fantastic, but it makes his blocks a little more awkward. All right, that's actually pretty good. I'm just going to attack with these. I, I can't attack Vendillion Click when there's a Thief of Sanity there. Yep, that trades... And you just triple block and go to one. So he's going to get an extra card off Kaito. Hmm, okay. Leave two burbs. Sure. We're well, going to stay at four. Okay, that also works for me. All right. So he's going to get an extra card off Kaito, but I do have a counter spell. So. The first good play I get to counter. Okay, he doesn't get to attack first, so I have to discard. Counter this. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're not in for that. <laughs> sorry, but not sorry. Binding, kill the conscripts. No, uh, okay, I need to top deck again. I mean, I top deck counterspell last turn, but he also top deck two cards this turn. This has just been a, a sick back and forth. Avison? Oh, Council's Judgment. Um, I'm going to play Council's Judgment. I think I just killed a Kaito. Yeah, well, what do I do? I could kill the bird and attack J. Brennan into two. And then he has two draw steps to find an answer to click. Yeah, that's got to be better. All right. Attack you down to two. You have two draws to find an answer. If I kill the Kaito, then we're just tied, and he gets the first draw. This, I think, gives me a better shot. Plus, he's got a lot of uh, big things to draw. All right. Scoop him up. Mm. There, that did not work. All right. Mm. 
Am I right? All right. Could go for an Avison here. Avison would, would be great. Skyclave. All right. Well, Skyclave actually is pretty good too. Skyclave the Kaito. Pass the turn. So now he gets to Vraska up to three, so he, d he doesn't die. But the problem is there's a shield right in that deck too. At some point, that's just going to come get me. Garrick Wildspeaker make a beast. All right. Can I top deck one more action spell in a row? <laughs> he has no cards in hand. Yeah, this has just been a sick back and forth. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? What a miser. Look at this. Look at these peels. Uh, kill the beast token. I've just been peeling so well. Attack Garrick. All right. So Flicker Wisp is lethal. He can, he can Broska to go up to four, so Flicker Wisp is not lethal. Don't play Shieldred first. Don't play Shieldred first. You could also sack Vraska to kill Flicker Wisp, and then Skyclave's not lethal. So this is just trade after trade. I'm due to draw a land here, right? <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. So if j missed on his turn, right, if you drew a land, what is it to play? If you go up to four with Vraska and you miss, you die. If you minus three Vraska and kill Flicker, so I think he he missed. Yeah, he had to have missed for that to be the play. That's the right play if you did miss, I think. Mm, okay. Unlucky. Not, not unlucky at all. I've been very lucky. All right, you're at one. I'll just keep this in hand in case I draw Fable, I guess. I don't really need to land. All right. Did he miss? Did he miss? Grist. <laughs> <laughs> so now he gets to mill one. Mill Shieldred, come on. Milled Lanorals. Now he gets to chump with Grist. What a sick game. All right, all right, all right. Oh. Uh, attack J, bro. He actually might get decked here. Especially if he if he mills Shieldred instead of drawing it, then decking is like a real, real thing. All right, draw. No. Oh, that's got to be Shieldred because that's the fastest clock here. Okay, what what am I hoping for? Mystic Confluence gets me out of this. Snuff Out doesn't do it. Treachery is amazing. Jace. Lingering Souls, White Plume. Yeah, I mean, I got some... Oh, Sika's Chariot is the draw. Sure. That's also a pretty fast clock. Because then you can minus. All right, yeah, that's that's a good play. That's a good play. Kill that. Make a three three. Okay, so that does reduce some of my outs. But all right. Action, 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 action. White plume. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I play it. I needed that one a turn prior. Not that I'm complaining by any stretch. Trust me. Um, Get a plane. So what do I have left? I have Gideon, Fable, Archangel, Jace. I mean, my spells are all just incredible. So if I can draw one of those. So now this does mean that he's not going to be able to... No, he can attack with two things because he can Grist plus one. Animate Chariot. But you're getting to the point where Grist plus one-ing is a little awkward. He could also Grist minus. Oh, are we not? Taking initiative back? Oh, we are. Okay, we're going to do it this way. Kill the cat token. Kill that. Take the initiative. I'm going down to seven, so I'm dead next turn. I need to draw something good. Again. <laughs> okay, I don't have a way to deck him here, unfortunately. All right. Jace. <sighs> Wait, is this? No, this lethal with the lava claw. Sick game. What a sick game. I had some really good draw steps. I needed just one more. Uh, I haven't actually seen a good way for him to blow up artifacts or enchantments. I'm kind of wondering if this Oblivion Ring wants to be in. And maybe I cut the Cathar Commando because it actually doesn't seem that... Oh, no. It kills Asika's Chariot. No, that's still weaker than Oblivion Ring, I think. 
I hope I don't get punished for Oblivion Ring, but I saw so much of his deck. Do I want to play... Gideon Jura also seems still pretty good. Where do I cut, though? If I want to put a Gideon in. I think on the play I'd rather have the lower curve stuff. All right. All right. I'm on the play here. So if I draw a blue mana, I'm going to mulligan this hand. I hate having to mulligan again. Oh. Do I mulligan to five here? Thing is, if I draw a blue land or any land I have reprieve into remand, I actually think I keep this. Put back Mystic Confluence. I just don't think a mold of five is more likely to win than this game, than this hand. Ah, oh, painful. This is a hard matchup, though. His, his cards are just really good value cards, and I don't have the best way to deal with those. All right, land. So can I have a game here? All right. Land is good. Um... I'm actually going to go for the throat that I think that my counter, I don't have hard counters here. It feels like letting him just cast his spells isn't great. Oh, Bloodstained Mire. Okay. And that gets underground C. So I have my blue mana. Wish I'd kept Mystic Confluence now. All right, let's just draw though. I don't really want to thin my deck of lands. <laughs> I wish I'd shuffled. All right. I'm going to reprieve this, I guess. Minsk and Boo, huh? All right. There's an O-ring. Land? Hmm. All right. Unfortunately, I don't have a land I can get. I mean, I have to just get a blue mana here to remand that. Okay. At some point, I would like to draw land. I mean, I did draw two land in a row. That was great. But now, like, if I drew a blue land, I could Vendillion click the Minsk and Boo. If I drew a white land, I could just play a Gideon and make a knight. All right, Minsk and Boo is in. I guess I'm going to need him not to cast multiple spells here. As unlikely as that may seem. If I draw a land next turn, I'm... Oh, uh, sure. All right. I'm still in it. Anime dead. No targets except land or else. All right, I guess... As painful as this is, I have to O-ring the Minsk and Boo. That's why that card's so sick. I just killed it, and they have a 4-4 Trample Haste still. If I draw planes, I can Flicker Wisp it, but now he's going to make another good play, and I'm just going to be really far behind. Hmm. Yeah. Island. <laughs> uh, I guess I just pass. Okay. We're on Team Jbro has all lands. I guess we just have to Vendillion click here. I can't target him because of Leovold. I'll target myself, but I will choose... Well, this is... We're in one card each turn. Oh, I can actually put a card back. Let's put back Zealous Conscripts. Okay, let's double block here. Okay. J-Bro, play, no, play nothing this turn. No. Okay. <laughs> A little lean on that, too. I guess I'm at seven. Sure. Flicker Wisp, your beast. You draw a card off Leovold. Uh, Leovold's going to be really tough here. Just going to pass with Counterspell up. I have that Lingering Souls, but I just have not been in a position to flash it back. I need to counterspell a good creature. Okay, that's not really good, because with Leovold out, griefing 
is just not a very good play. Okay, just be out of out of gas completely. Oh, okay. Yes, I will. I will trade. That I'm fine with. Okay, okay. Now, now I can counsel's judgment plus animate dead. Yeah, that, that's probably pretty good. I could also lingering souls. Um, could also Gideon. So, do I think he's got a play in hand? Yeah, let's animate dead the grief. And grief, forest, forest, sure. Council's judgment, Garrick. Okay. All right, Jabra's on no cards. If he can just miss for a couple turns here, that's all. I have five now because now I, if I draw a land, I can go Gideon plus Lingering Souls. Oh, White Plume. All right, I will do that instead. Okay, okay. Plains, land, Lingering Souls. Okay, okay. I'm just going to pass now. Oh, I should have attacked. I forgot White Plume on taps. I'm just jamming here. No Shieldred, no Shieldred. Attack with beast. Block with those, I think. Okay. All right. No play this turn. Oh, Lava Claw. Yes, I actually think now I'm in great shape. Um, do I want to scry? I don't really care about Mystic Confluence. I think I'm just going to go a little more aggressive here. I think I'm actually going to put the counters on the White Plume. Oh, Archangel Avison. All right. That means I get to hit for six and then just pass the turn. Untap this. And maybe if he doesn't draw anything, he goes animate Lava Claw, I'll block, and then I'll Avison. And that's going to be disgusting. <sighs> Didn't think we had a chance this one, but Jabro flooded in an, at an opportune time. And that... That is often enough. <clears throat> I mean, this is just lethal now, because I've got a, it's a trap. That dies, I'm, I get to attack back for 10 plus trap for five more. Fertile ground, yeah, that is not gonna do it. Ooh, here we go, trap. Take it. I even had a Mystic Confluence if I needed it. And attack for 10. Wow. Didn't think we were getting across the finish line, but we got there. And uh, that puts us at 1 and 0. Oh. All right. Sick round 2. Or sick, sick round 1. And uh, now we're on round 2. We're playing against a, a matchup I actually think is going to be pretty tough. Uh, Blue-black reanimator with like Terastodon, reanimate, that sort of thing. Though... Go for the throat. Council's judgment are both pretty good against that sort of strategy. Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. Lead on Tarn, which wants to get either Sacred Foundry or Underground Sea. Turn on Elvish Mystic. Oh, green, blue, green black green. I mean, sorry. Um, I guess it doesn't matter which one I lead with too much. And then I'm probably going to. Kill the elf on turn two if nothing else has has been played. Land light hand or at least no other sources of untapped green. You wouldn't play Pete Lynn turn one if you did. And then try to set up a turn three white plume. I mean, this is a good hand. Interaction on two and three and then four with Snapcaster. Go for the throat. Treachery's good. White plume's good. But my main vulnerability here is this hand's a little slow and... I'm on the draw against an elf, so <laughs> those are not things that I typically am, am a huge fan of. I wonder if they're setting up a turn two to Rastodon and are deciding whether to go for it or not. That's actually also why I really wanted to play the fetch on turn one, because that way I'm Terastodon proof for at least a turn. It actually brings up a good question. Let's say Iomatic goes like land attack for one go. Do I want to fetch, or is it better just to play another... Fetch land next turn. Again, keep my land safe from Nasty Terasty. Lotus Petal, okay. What are we up to here? 
This is a mind twist. Yeah. Okay. I lost my white plume. I don't like that. Um. I guess I'm gonna get underground C here. I'm just gonna go for the throat that and leave it leave snuff out in hand. Okay. Losing the white plume in a land, or sorry, in a snapcaster was pretty bad. Losing a land would have been pretty bad too. Recurring nightmare, okay. Lands are fine. Alright, Urza's at least something to play if I draw two more lands, so hoping for that. Sorry, we got a bit of cleaning going on. I apologize in advance. All right, it's a low resource game. I mean, Mind Twist Lotus Petal was a two for three. So not like the end of the world, but my hand that I'm left with is now a three drop, a four drop and a five drop and a zero drop to be fair. But if I draw planes, I'm just gonna snap off Council's Judgment on Recurring Nightmare, I think. Though, so, maybe not, I mean, it's obviously nice to kill Recurring Nightmare when you have the opportunity to do so, but when they have nothing in their graveyard worth bringing back and nothing in play, then maybe Recurring Nightmare just doesn't do anything, so... <laughs> All right, Blood Crypt go. All right, lands, lands would be good. All right, Island is great, because now any land draw gets me an Urza, and once I get Urza down, I feel very good about this game. They're not cracking Peatland which means they might be short on playing something. Mm -hmm. No plays, all right. Land, 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 land. Just basic planes, really not much to ask for. Mm. Definitely a big drawback there. I mean, Glass Pool Mimic, well, it didn't win me the game because I lost that game, but almost won me the game. <laughs> so, uh, cycling that land, but not cracking peat land, sure. Uh, Glass Pool Mimic almost won me game two by copying conscripts, even though this game it was pretty bad. They have Entomb or something? Entomb could be rough. The good thing about Terastodon, though, is for me, is that because of this snuff out, if Eomatic goes for like a Terastodon blowing up my lands and I kill the Terastodon, I just end up with a bunch of beasts in play. So we'll see. Yeah, there's Entomb. Let's see what the Entomb plan is here. Troxa. I don't like that. Okay. Don't, don't play a creature. All right. Yeah, yeah. Needed that glass pool movement to be a planes to kill recurring nightmare. So what did we get? Jeez, yeah, I'm gonna lose this now. I got stalled for a little too long. <laughs> so Sylvan Library for sure. Forest. Probably Inquisition through the Breach and Archon of Cruelty. So I can't play anything right now because I can't even snuff this out. Uh, I guess I'm gonna get Yep, the, the card they have the cards I, I named. Yeah, Inquisition, my, my council's judgment. I mean, I guess if I draw a land, I can treachery the Troxa and then play Urza. That is actually pretty good. Because of the treachery, though, they might just go recurring nightmare, sack a Troxa, bring back Orcish Lumberjack. It's actually not crazy to consider doing that. Their hand right now is Recurring Nightmare plus these. If I had just had this on turn three, the game would have been over. <laughs> That's not necessarily true, but I think it's pretty close to true. I think a White Plume going, given how much time it's turn six right now, yeah, there's no way. All right. Ragavan. Okay, I have a Snuff Out, so I don't really care about that. They know about the Snuff Out, too. Okay. Land, 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 land. But an uncastable? All right, we're dead. If I'd been able to steal that and play that, I actually think I would have had a shot, but 
in this particular case, I did not. All right. Um, I, mean, I guess I probably want O-Ring. Zealous Conscript seems like it could do something. I think I still want Snuff Out. Yeah. Cathar Commando. Oh, Wrath of God seems a little less good. Gideon Jura also seems less good. Winds of Abandon as a two mana kill spell. I might want Adeline and just cut Mother of Runes. Just go for a little bit more aggressive of a start. I might also also cut Glass Pole Mimic for uh, a Plains. Oh, I didn't put no lands in my sideboard again. <laughs> Maybe not. Whatever. Uh, do you want Hero Blade Hold as well? It might be better than Gideon Ally of Zendikar. I'm just looking at ways to try to close the game a little bit faster. All right. Mm -hmm. I'd like to play first. All right. Let's see if we can play White Plume on three. Hopefully don't get inquisitioned. Well, they probe. They know it's coming. <laughs> now if they have a Lumberjack or uh, an Elvish Mystic, I just get to go for the Throat It. Tapped over Grim Tomb. All right. Remander Reprieve would be my preferred draw here. Council's Judgment. Okay. <laughs> Him me? Oh, Una's Prowler, okay. I have to kill that. Can discard something, but I need to kill it, A, because it's a recurring nightmare target, or at least a way to, a, a thing to feed recurring nightmare, and B, because if I play White Plume, I'm not gonna want them to take initiative back, obviously. They're deciding whether they wanna sacrifice. They don't know about the, the Council's Judgment, which that is really nice. Discard Atroxa, okay. Okay, Atroxa down. Draw. Yes, I play the island, sure. White Plume, get another Plains. All right, pass the turn. I wanted to play island instead of Plains because if my lands get blown up, I wanted to have two, light, two white lands in, in hand, though I don't think it's very likely I get Terrastodon. All right, I think with Council's Judgment in hand, it's possible I could beat Atroxa if it gets into play this turn. Part of the problem, though, with Atroxa is that the turn Atroxa comes into play, I often am going to get Inquisitioned as well. So, But on the other hand, I can scry two and maybe find something. This much tanking, I kind of assume Atroxa's hitting the board this turn. Then again, they did think for a little bit before discarding Atroxa to Una's Prowler, which kind of indicates to me maybe they didn't have reanimate set up quite yet i might also get mind twisted here i guess no no plays okay all right let's scry i'm definitely scrying too here because <laughs> i want to find one of my counter spells hero of blade hold and urza i'm actually going to keep the hero of blade hold i think guaranteeing a good play this turn is better than uh, bottling them both and hoping to draw a reprieve or remand. Okay. Play this. Pass the turn. Entomb? Sure. I, I could entomb an Archon, I guess. Archon makes me wish I had... Urza instead of Hero of Bladehold, I think. Well, that's actually not even true. No, no, the Hero of Bladehold's still better. Because if if I get Archon this turn, I'm just going to sack the White Plume. Entomb for Reanimate. Oh, we're going to... Oh, that's not going to work out too well. I assume what they're going to do is regrowth the Reanimate and then Reanimate Atroxa. But that puts you down to 8 life, and I have a lot of attacks in, in hand. Or, sorry, in play. And I have two ways to remove blockers in hand, so I actually feel like I'm in good shape here. Three mana. Oh, Yogmas will, sure. That's even better because that means they're tapped out. All right, I don't think that's going to work out. 
probe, sure. Reanimate Atroxa, go to six, and then just, I guess you could hit Lotus Petal into something maybe, but my hand has two ways to remove Atroxa and I'm attacking for 10 next turn. So I'm really glad I played a creature this turn. Okay, game three on the draw in a matchup that's still not good. <laughs> All right. Uh, do I want Winds of Abandon? It is possible that Winds of Abandon is good. I could cut Lingering Souls. Uh, Lingering Souls really isn't that good in this matchup. It is good in one situation, which is if they play Terastodon. Maybe I just cut Urza, because I think Urza is kind of a weak threat. And I put in Winds. All right. Yeah, I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay. The problem is I just don't have any free spells except Snuff Out, so it's just really hard, especially on the draw, to to be able to compete mana-wise here. Uh, well, I'm going to mulligan this hand. I just have to hope that uh, my opponent doesn't draw, like, Entomb or, you know, any of the fast reanimate stuff. That would be pretty nice. Is it going to mulligan? We'll find out, I suppose. Yeah, this is just not a keep. I mean, if I replaced any card with a land, I would probably keep, because turn two, Cathar Commando, turn three, Adeline is actually the kind of draw I want. Like, especially backed up by O-Ring and maybe at some point Mystic Confluence, but I, I'm, this isn't good enough to keep a one-lander, especially since it's really unlikely I cast Adeline on three by keeping this hand. I guess, you know, I don't even need to look at the game log, because if Eomatic Mulligans, Dirty Mulligans, I'm not going to keep this hand either way. Let my team know what's up. Eomatic may have stepped out to do something. So what's my ideal hand? I guess, looking at the deck, the cards I want to see most are Counterspell, Reprieve, Remand early, and then White Plume, Adeline, or Fable as, like, Oh, Vanillian Click's also great. Yeah, I mean, look, if I'm, I'm mulliganing, which makes things harder, but if Eomatic doesn't have like a turn two reanimate, I have three turn two interactions, Counterspell, Remand, Reprieve, and then I have V-Click as an interaction on four, plus Council's Judgment and Skyclave. All right, I'm going to mulligan. All right, they mulliganed, and I think this is a good hand. I mean, this is a great hand. Uh... I guess I'm putting back Oblivion Ring and keeping Counterspell and Reprieve. And I think like I, I think putting back a land would be crazy. And I think Flicker Wisp is better than Oblivion Ring. Well, O-Ring is like the, kind of a mid-range card. Okay. Turn one elf. Sure. Just don't turn to me. <laughs> uh, I guess I've already drawn... I'm going to play Island turn one. It could bite me if I get turn two to Rastodon, but I don't want to... I don't. I might want to fetch for Sacred Foundry, so if I draw a basic Island or Underground Sea, I would much rather have done it that way and kept the Flooded Strand. So if I play Flooded Strand turn one, I'm pricing myself into that. Okay, so that was the only green source to start with, and they explored and they played that. Wall of Roots. Actually, I don't mind that. I mean, this is a lot of ramp, but down to two cards in hand. Now, unfortunately... I have to play Flooded Strand. I, I think it's just too bad if, if... if I have to counterspell this turn and I can't, even though I would rather reprieve this turn. Mm, Ran six, yeah, that I have to counterspell, unfortunately. Ran and six with Nurturing Peatland is just too good, and it also picks off my Lingering Souls and Flicker Wisp, so. Not much I can do there. Entomb, sure. Or are they just going to turn three Atroxomy after playing Ren and six to beat out the counterspell? If that's the case, that's the case. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and they hit 
a bunch of stuff. Sure, we're done. There's just there's, no, don't really have outs here. All right, round three. Now we're gonna play against Kenji. All right, it's showdown time. It's me against Kenji. So current records in the draft. I'm one and one. You saw probably saw all that. Uh, Hank is one and zero oh playing round two, but I think losing. So that puts us at two and one. Slacks is one and one. It puts us at three and two. Which means if we get two of the next three, we win. And uh, the other team, J Bro, is 0 1, Kenji's 0 2, but uh, Eomatic is 2 and 0. All right. I am battling against Kenji here. I am going to keep this hand. Mother of Runes into Remand is pretty good. Kenji's on blue red combo. So, like, Splinter Twin, Pestermite, Sahili, uh, Felidar Guardian, Echo Vion, stuff like that. So we'll see. This isn't the best hand against combo, to be honest, but I'm not going to mulligan it. Okay, luckily that wasn't a stomp. I know he's got a Bone Crusher Giant in his deck. All right, well, I'm just going to pass. Remand whatever gets played this turn. Into Lingering Souls without even the way to flash it back. Yeah, that is fine. What I really want to draw is Fable. That would be a nice draw. Let's see what he's up to this turn. Sahili Rai. All right, yeah, I will remand that. Okay. Planes, huh? Uh, underground Sea is at least something. All right, let's go Lingering Souls. Not loving the situation. Really don't feel like I'm particularly strong against combo, though... One thing that's kind of cool about Gideon Jura is that if you plus two Gideon, it actually buys you a turn against Splinter Twin and Felidar Guardian, which actually can set up the Wrath uh, as the stopper. Kind of funny. They can make infinite Pester Mites and they still all have to attack Gideon. Come at me, bro. Okay, what would be this? What you got here? Frantic Search, Floating a White. Okie dokie. I know he's got Echo of Yons in his deck and Kiki Jiki, so I guess I'm glad I, I took the conscripts. Next turn, I guess I hope I draw something. If I don't, I guess I have the uh, Lingering Souls flashback, if, if nothing else. Discarding Echo of Yons and Faithless Living. Look at that. Discarding all the combo pieces. Or the flashback cards, rather. Hmm. There goes Sahili. He's going to ping me for one and scry one. And then I'm going to attack Sahili with the Lingering Souls tokens. And action? No. Marsh Flats. Attack Sahili. Leave up <clears throat> Mother of Runes here. I get to kill Sahili next turn, so. I mean, assuming I get an next turn, so I don't think I need to attack with Mother of Runes. All right, I guess Sahili is going to scry again. Counterspell would have been a, a pretty decent draw, though I guess Counterspell would have been a little awkward because then I couldn't flash back Souls because I wouldn't have drawn the Marsh Flats. All right. Yeah, I, I actually have Gopher to Throat and Snuff Out are both fantastic in this matchup, so I do have some good... Options there. Zealous Conscripts, no. Hero Bladehold. Hero Bladehold might be okay. Wrath of God. Despite the Gideon trick, Wrath of God I don't think is actually going to be good. I think I'd rather have Hero Bladehold. And do I want Archangel Avacyn over anything? I don't think so. Maybe over Treachery? Mm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. All right. I think that's solid. The other option is to play a Wedding Announcement just because... It's a card I can cast on turn three, and then I don't have to tap out anymore. Maybe that's better than Urza. Yeah, actually, I could. I, maybe I just put an Adeline. Actually, I wonder if Adeline's actually or Wedding Announcement's better than Archangel Avacyn. I like all the cheaper cards. The Wedding Announcement might actually be better than Lingering Souls too. Now, Lingering Souls is pretty good at attacking Planeswalkers. Uh, don't think I want O-Ring. 
Yeah, let's try the slightly lower curve stuff. I, I don't know about Mother of Runes either. I could definitely see that being medium, but I have some decent creatures to protect, I guess. All right, I would like to play first. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I get to go turn three V-click. I guess that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Pass the turn. And then I have go for the throat, which will be good later. Sure. Jeez, okay. Lots of manas. Let's draw. All right, I've drawn a couple of manas myself. Let's see what you got, Mr. Numat. <laughs> Consecrated Sphinx, Incinerate, Faithless Looting. So I know I have Go for the Throat for Consecrated Sphinx, and if I draw Anime Dead, I'm going to be really annoyed that I did that. But Go for the Throat is pretty important in this matchup because it stops both of his main kill conditions. So I think I think it's better just to take take the Consecrated Sphinx. I don't really care about looting or incinerate. Like, I have Lingering Souls to attack with, even if the V-click dies. And looting sure does let Kenji see new cards, but uh, I don't think that I don't think that it's like that big of a worry. Mm -hmm. So you just go to Xander's Lounge and Mountain, and then flashing back faceless looting. Another land? I need to stop drawing these lands. That's really, really not helping me win. <laughs> All right. Lingering Souls, Bash You. Incinerate got discarded as well. Okay. Are we just casting an Echo of Eons here? I would welcome an Echo of Eons. My hand is garbage. Though if, if he's casting Echo, he's going to see Thing Song first, so it could be a different expensive card. Oh, Frantic Search. I basically have to tap out for Lingering Souls there. I, I can't just leave up Go for the Throat. I need to try to kill him. He also has the cards like Chandra in his deck, <clears throat> and playing the Lingering Souls makes the Chandra quite a bit worse. All right, see Thing Song it is. Am I about to get comboed out here? Oh no, this just looks like Echo. Oh, Upheaval. That's just, yeah, I'm not going to beat that. Ugh. Yeah, I thought this deck was decent, but the way the matchups broke out, I don't I don't, I don't think I had a single good matchup. I think I had all bad matchups. <laughs> all right, what do we got? Pestermite, sure. Are we going to twin the Pestermite now? Are we going to Kiki here? Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Can I draw Snuff out, please? I have a Swamp in my deck still to go get. <laughs> Snuff out? Uh, no, all right, I'll play Godless Shrine. Go. <laughs> Can't really imagine winning this game. But, uh, yeah, I had a one-outer. All right. Well, I went one and two. I'll be back in just a sec to uh, report on the rest of my team because we might still have a decent shot here. All righty. So I finished one and two. Boo. Uh, currently, both my teammates are one and one. So this is a close draft. I need them both to go two on for us to win. This is game three of Slacks versus Jaybro. Slacks went, they both mulligan and Slacks has Forest Noble. And this is Slacks' turn two. Let's see what, uh, let's see what comes out from here. Let's see. Let's see. 
this is mm, green green I hope it's channel that it is that's that's why slacks was thinking so long all right what are we channeling out it's got some big things to channel out Karn liberated okay and going upstairs I actually like that a lot because if you minus three you have to target smugglers copter or you risk the copter eating the Karn but Karn plus four is just so much material. You just get to eat that. You get to play Zagoth Triumph. And then next turn, if Jaybro has a creature that can crew copter, which it looks like he does, you can decide to do, you can just keep plus four in Karn. A Thief of Sanity, sure. That's gonna crew copter, hit Karn down to seven. Okay, so that's a little closer because Then if Karn goes down to seven, you then minus three the Karn down to four. I guess you could just minus three the Karn on the Smuggler's Copter. The Thief of Sanity can attack Karn down to two. And then even if Jabro has a red land to animate Lava Claw, which is pretty unlikely, Jabro doesn't have a ton of those, you can... Uh... Oh, we just went straight for the face. Sure, I guess we're both at ten. Yeah, no, that also makes sense. But uh, you, you are going to want to minus that. That makes minus and Karn a little easier here. This makes me scared of Minsk, Minsk and Boo. Let's see. You got a Talisman. And Maelstrom Pulse the Thief of Sanity. Nice. Okay. Could attack with Noble, but I actually kind of like holding it back. You just don't really know what's coming. All right, so if Jaybro goes land, Minsk and Boo, that would be annoying. This is Grist. No! Oh, well, there's no creature in play because Grist can kill Planeswalkers. But you have to have a creature in play. Wow, that was a close one. Okay. I mean, now I feel like if you've already attacked Slacks, you kind of are priced into doing it again. Uh, this is going to be close. So... What I've kind of decided when it comes to replays is I will not be watching replays like during my matches, like until I finished all three. But then as, if the draft's not concluded, I like doing a little bit of extra on the end. That way, if you want to watch all three of my matches and then you don't want to watch replays or not replays, but like spectating matches, you can just skip over those. If uh, you do want to watch them, then here we are. We get to watch more cube. I, I think that's upside. But I want to kind of partition it so that you're not... You get the, the, the clean three matches and then a little bit of extra content. All right. Copter's coming, and now we're going at Karn. I think I think Jabril wanted to hit Karn last time as well. Chose not to loot. So basically has Minsk and Boo in hand 100%. Okay. But I think that's okay. Pest infestation, nice. I like that a lot. And then eat the grist with Karn, and then hit for one. And now, even if Jabro draws a land to play Minsk and Boo, I think that the Karn is going to be enough to, to take it down. Yeah, that is the the obvious Minsk and Boo. Because now you Minsk up to a 4-4. Four, four. Attack Karn, block with Pest, Karn goes down to four, Karn goes down to one, and Jabro has no cards in hand. Uh, well, uh, Minsk and Boo is really good, because now if you minus on Minsk, then the Boo still stays in play, and if you minus on the Boo, that clearly doesn't do anything. So I guess it'll kind of depend if Slax has something else to play here. But imagine if the Karn was at three less loyalty from that first Smuggler's Copter hit. This game would be a lot easier for... Uh, for uh what's it called for for jabro yeah minsk is a messed up card mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if you've got no plays what do you do i guess you probably have to minus three karn on minsk and boo obviously if you have a creature removal or a blocker that can block boo that's a very different thing but because if you plus four Karn, that just doesn't do anything. All right, so this ends up being like, despite a turn two Karn, Minsk and Boo and Smuggler's Copter and Thief all combined to, 
to take down the car, and I assume here. Well, let's see what Slax has left in the tank here. Mm. I mean, Grist buying a turn was really good. Minsk is just a great card. Oh, Underground Adventure. Oh, no, we're doing fine then. Underground Adventure was great. Because now, if j Road doesn't draw anything, then these two get to block Boo, and then that's just it. You get to untap with the initiative and Karn. Okay. Okay, okay. So j Road's got a miss here, and if j Road's got one turn to hit. A removal spell for Undermine Adventure. The thing is, that actually doesn't even put us out of the out of competition because yes the boo kills Karn in that spot but then we get initiative level two of scrying for two mm, do we have something demonic tutor <laughs> okay well demonic tutor wasn't the best card you could draw because by definition the best card you could draw is the card that you would have rather tutored for but I don't know what Jabro has in terms of cheap removal, if anything. I mean, probably something, but... Okay. Witherbloom Command. Oh, that is not going to do it. That doesn't kill Karn or take back the initiative. So now what is, what is this... What is a hamster to do here? That's... Do you go after the Karn or do you just go after Slacks? You go after the Karn. And chump. Karn stays alive. Play the Prismatic Vista. You venture into the Undercity. What do you find? Two counters on the Noble. Draw. So this really makes sense if Slax has another play. Which would it look like he does. Oh, okay, there we go. Now we have two blockers. That Lava Claw reaches is active now. Ooh, now we have three blockers. Never mind, we're... Now we're just, just crushing it. This is going to get Mountain here because you need to be able to animate Lava Claw. But now we have Karn on five loyalty and we have the initiative. We're going into a trap next round. To nug for five. Jibro's got to have drawn something really good here. Because as things currently stand, Boo attacks as a 4-4 trample. And these two double block. Kills like the Dryad. And Lava Claw gets chumped. Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay. If we're animating Lava Claw here, like if that's what Jibro's doing, I think that Slax is going to win. Which means that we're one match away from winning. It's all going to depend on Hank's round. Hank is currently playing. We'll, we'll check in after this, but I want to watch the conclusion of this match because that will determine whether my 1-2 sinks the team or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I thought that, 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 that my deck was fine, but obviously uh, I think that our match against j Rose was super close, managed to barely pull it out, and then just got steamrolled by Kenji and went to game three against Iomatic, but games one and... Game one was close. I had some outs I could, against Iomatic. I could have just drawn lands earlier and had some plays and maybe I would have won. Game three, I just got run over. So I think I had the kind of deck that if you have like a force of will or a force of negation, it goes a long way. I didn't have either of those cards or a thought seize. I just needed something like that. But this game is over. Game over, man. Mm -hmm. Slacks casting, oh, not even casting more stuff, just cycling a land. But now you can play Haywire Might and just plus Karn. I like just plusing Karn because you have Dryad to block Lava Claw. There's just no reason to lose Karn to like a burn spell, or I guess there's probably not very many haste creatures. Uh, j has got the heart of a champion here. We're going to play a Shieldred. Oh, Wood Elves. All right. And if Karn ever gets to 14, bringing, starting a game where you have Grisk and, Grist and Minsk and Boo is 
obviously just ridiculous. Now we get to draw an extra card. Yeah, I can't conceive of a sequence of draws given that Jabro has no cards in hand that get him back into this game. So let's just let the formalities happen here. I, I assume Jabro is going to scoop after this draw step. Mm -hmm. Land. Oh, fighting to the bitter end. Okay, I like it. Let's get, we get to hit Throne of the Dead 3. So reveal the top 10 cards. And you can put a creature into play. Hex Drinker. Coma. <laughs> All right. That, that officially has to do it. <laughs> there, there, there's no coming back from this one. Sorry, J-Bro. All right. In this case, let's see how this is going. 14 life to 7 life. Sylvan Library. Uh, Kroxa. Okay, two cards in hand. Through the Breach and Archon have both been used. Reanimate's been used and Tomb's been used. So that's a lot of stuff. Are they still battling over here? They can't really be. Okay. <laughs> Manalik the Kroxa. Okay. So Iomatic pays the three, and then probably Hank, oh, Iomatic has better, bigger and better things to do. Persist on Archon, uh-oh. That's no good. That is no good. Char. Yeah, now you go to two, sack a token. Iomatic draws. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Hank is going to lose this game. Let's see what... And Slacks did in fact win. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's all going to come down to this game three. And... Mm. I hope it's game three, or I hope this is game two. Oh, Underworld Breach, hold on. Hold your horses. 13. Oh man, Breach is good. Is it good enough to, to deal here? I guess you get to go ponder double a braid at the very least. Okay, I, 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 I'm loving this. Right, because you can abrade, braid, abrade, and then unfortunately can't Mishra's bobble, but I, I assume you've got to kill that Archon. Because you have one, two spells, and then you're left with two cards in Graveyard. So, well, this doesn't leave Iomatic with a ton of cards. So that's something. I mean, Breach was a deal six plus a ponder. It was double a braid ponder, split card. Sure. Very reasonable. Okay, attacking on 12. And past the turn. I don't love it because I feel like Iomatic's got a lot of uh, a lot of action potentially here between recurring nightmare. Though I guess Elvish Mystic Devoted Druid is gone. Wall of Roots is still on the deck. Yeah, I think this is going to be a tough game to win. Though that breach was cool. That breach was like a nice thing. All right, this is game two, and Hank is up a game. So if Hank loses this, which Seems likely, but not inevitable. Uh, Kroxa gets to come back now. Get your last card. And even if that last card is a spell to keep you alive, because if it's a land, you just die on the spot. Even if it's a spell, you then have to draw 
I guess drawing a spell lets you chomp again, but that's not really much. All right. Let's check back in in one sec for round or game three. All right. Game three. We started with a preordain. Remember, Hank is on my team, and this is game three, match nine. So the winner of this game is the winner of the draft. And uh, I'm really hoping when you go one, two, you really hope that you your team takes it down despite your your best in, you know efforts to not help. Uh, all right, so spending a cloud skate. That's a it's an okay little start. Okay, Iomatic's got the potential for some really fast draws. I, I mean, my game three against them, they went elf wall turn three ren and six with a cycling land in play. So I countered it, and then they went entomb reanimate same turn. So. Ooh, Sylvan leaving up in Tomb. Uh, going to be close. The good thing is Hank does have um, Force of Negation in their deck. So that is a nice play. Oh, there's a Swiss Spear. Don't hate that. Are we going to kill the Elf too? No, we're just going to pass. Oh, they've got Mana Leak as well. Okay, there it goes in Tomb. I think... Yeah, I think countering this is good. Ooh, spell pierce especially. Because then you can't spell pierce a lot of the animate spells. And this makes a lot of uh, Iomatic's draws a lot worse. Because basically, it's always tough. You counter the Entomb, which by itself does nothing. Like, it doesn't actually put anything into play. But if you counter it, then uh, the reanimate, the recurring nightmare... And any other animate spells, I think it might just be those two, but those are both dead. Also, I think when it's Spell Pierce, it ends up not being very close because with Spell Pierce, you just can't really counter reanimate or recurring nightmare on a consistent basis, especially. Especially not uh, <laughs> reanimate. That's just like not, not going to happen. Hank's got a lot of burn too, so hopefully Iomatic... <laughs> it's like... Hopefully Automatic pays a lot of life if Hank has a lot of burn in hand, because that's good for us. Or, in this case, doesn't pay life out of fear of burn, and then Hank has non-burn cards. Either way, I think we can get an advantage. Well, there's Recurring Nightmare. So, as it turned out, it would have been better to pierce the other way, but I think that's totally fine. Oh, can we kill this elf, please? Would be very nice if we could. Riftwing's coming in next turn, which is kind of nice. What are we hoping for here? A burden spell to pump Swift Spear and attack. I mean, obviously we're hoping Hank draws Ancestral Recall because that card is great. So, I, I think that the elf isn't as big of a threat just because uh, there's no creature in the graveyard, so the Recurring Nightmare isn't really doing much right now, and I don't think there's an easy way for Iomatic to discard. Direfleet Turtle in Tomb. All right, I mean, that puts a thing on the board, and it pumps the Swift Spear, which is nice. So this, you get to hit for two. So Iomatic didn't play a land or pay life to Sylvan. Okay, I guess we're kind of happy they didn't pay life. <laughs> Entombing a Seasoned Pyromancer. All right, yeah, that's a little value. Because Riftwing comes in next turn, and you can bounce something, which is pretty cool. Okay, Sylvan comes in, pops. Hopefully there's no Una's Prowler this turn. Thing is, you couldn't really stop Una's Prowler re recurring Nightmare, even if you did kill the, the Elvish Mystic. Okay, so you drew a land. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there it goes. Unfortunately, going to lose this draft. Needed to win one more. I don't think Archon's very beatable. I guess you can bounce the Archon. Well, it's actually not the end of the world. Bouncing the Archon does... Put four points on the board. You're, yeah, you know what? It's 
the Unus Prowler is gone, so it's not going to be the easiest. They, it's going to be kind of a, kind of an elaborate way to get back Archon into the graveyard because you get to bounce the Archon attack for four, and then Hank can or not Hank, uh, Iomatic can go recurring Nightmare, sack Elvish Mystic, get back Una's Prowler. And then discard Archon and then Recurring Nightmare again. But any burn spell really helps here. Yeah, I don't hate this position. Look, for there being an Archon that just hit the board, this could be worse, is all I'm saying. Do need to draw something good here, though. Well, I guess a land lets you reanimate, lets you season Pyro. Mm hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay. Sylvan. Yeah, I mean, you still probably can't pay life on the Sylvan, though. Hematic has eight cards. Going to go to six after the Sylvan, if you put the Sylvan cards back. So, worst case scenario, Recurring Nightmare is going to hit the board, or at least going to get played. Okay. Hmm. Just did Hank draw a counter? My team's like all nervous. Me, me, and, me and Slacks are watching the match, but we can't see the cards in hand. <laughs> all right, all right. Because Hank has Spell Pierce, Mana Leak, Force of Negation in deck, so could have had one of those. Okay. There's Mana Leak. There we go. There we go. Iomatic doesn't has no other play. Not even a land. And might as well attack for one, sure. Alright, and then land, let's 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 hank reanimate pyromancer tokens or make pyromancer tokens. I guess it's not reanimate. Alright, attack for four down to twelve. Okay, Sylvan pops off, but there was no land in the top three last turn, so now if there is a land, Iomatic has to it have to be third down. It's like a Gaunty or something. Okay. Unfortunate. So you get to season Pyro. End of turn. All right, can we get some burn spells? Any burn spells? Or ancestral recalls. That would be nice. All right, we do have six on the board. Is this a way to kill Gaunty? The Gaunt Father? Oh, there it goes, there's the Char. Attack for six, one card in hand. This is super close. All right. I mean, remember Iomatic also got a card off of uh, Hank's deck, so they have access to two new cards this turn, one off of... Uh... Oh, no, 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 it's Fiery Confluence! No! Uh. Uh. All right, that killed the elf at least. All right. Mm -hmm. This is looking bad again. Oh, had to Gaunti into Confluence. <laughs> Sick. Okay. Did we hit a land? We did. It's a tap land at least, so we get another turn. Okay. Bobble. Sure. Bobble it up. Okay. Draw. Draw. Sylvan, but now we have access to red mana. We, Iomatic has access to red mana. Definitely not we. All right. Can we draw uh, Underworld Breach? That would be so sick. Okay, what is this? Garrick Relentless, sure. I feel like Hank has got a ton of super live draws. Torrential, Gear Hulk, Underworld Breach, Ancestral Recall. All of these would just be disgusting. Bonfire you down to one. <laughs> All right. 
I was like, good job, Hank. Uh, okay, well, that also turns off the nurturing peatland. It doesn't kill the Garrick, but this puts... Uh, this puts Eomatic to one. Oh, and then now any burn spell from Hank, any card draw is really good. Underworld Breach is, of course, just game. You might as well sack the peatland. It doesn't do anything else. Make a wolf. And... Do we have plays? Oh, is that Kruxa? No, Raghavan, not dashed. Interesting. All right. Go on, Hank. Do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. What do we got? Ooh, is it a burn spell? Thieving Skydiver. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't do it. it. Just gets Garricked, but that's okay. It's okay. Land. Garrick. And now next turn we're gonna get Archond because of uh, that Ragavan. All right, Ragavan. I swear if you hit Ragavan, Chain Lightning. No. <laughs> Uh, no pain. Yog will. Okay, sure. Recurring nightmare. Sure. Gonna get back a Gaunty or something. Now you're just gonna play those and pass. All right. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Do it. No. Ah. <laughs> uh. Now, I think I think we're done because now you can hard cast Archon. This puts a uh, an ancestral. Come on! <laughs> oh, this the cube is awesome. Even though we're gonna lose, this cube is awesome. All right, can we hit Underworld Breach? We still have an out here. Breachers. Breachers, we deserve it. We deserve it. Ponder. Uh oh. Because Underworld Breach is just straight up just a win with Fiery Confluence. <clears throat> okay. We get to see. What is this? Oh, Torrential Gear Hook. Is this going to be Gear Hook for the draw? Oh my god, this is so good. This is just the best. All right. This is this is this is actually way better. You get you get bonus bonus games. Uh, good game. It's a draw. Uh. All right, they're going to remake, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're not going to do we're not going to do clocks like the, the, the clocks are. Uh, the clocks are just there, like if someone's like obviously double queuing or just taking a ton of time and just not really like uh, respecting the time of the other participants, which no one's doing here. We don't really have it go to clocks. So, all right, let's 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 restart again and uh, we get another awesome game for all the marbles. All right, time for game four for every all the marbles. <laughs> oh, we got bonus magic here. It's great. And uh, they again, they restarted the match just because timing out is not really in the spirit of the Discord. We just kind of have the clocks there as a... Uh, Way to keep people paying at a reasonable pace, and as long as they do, we're not looking to we're looking to have the good matches and come to their magic conclusions, not based on timing out. All right, Mountain Island go. So no creature, which is unfortunate, but 
hopefully some counters or something. <laughs> Wasteland's really bad against Hank. He's got zero, uh, zero non-basics, I think, in the deck. So this looks like a hand that probably has some counter magic. <clears throat> All right. Um, and then went Wall of so turn three. So didn't play an extra land this turn because remember the Explorer. So could Iomatics out of lands in hand. Mm. All right. What do we got? End of turn here. Char to the face and not hitting the wall of roots. Okay. Okay. Preordain. I like that too. Preordain is good. And then probably. My guess is this Devoted Druid's going to die, but we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully play a land this turn. Preordain, what do we do with the Preordain? Two on the bottom, okay. Not ideal. Let's hope... Uh, Ooh, young Pyro, no land. Okay. All right, Iomatic's got a lot of mana here. Three, oh, Probe, paying the life. I don't mind that. What do we got? I guess we didn't, it didn't show us. It didn't even show us. All right, three, four, five, six mana. Seven mana with a land. It's not enough to hardcast Archon or Terastodon. And I think next turn, I assume this Devoted Druid is dying. If if Hank's got five cards in hand and none of them are land, then I think there's a good chance of that. Only a single black, which is nice. We want to keep Iomatic off black as long as possible. It's funny, Iomatic could have had a different land instead of a Wasteland, but you, like, with red and six, almost never want to side out Wasteland. It's just, as it turns out, Hank's deck is just all basics. All right, looks like Hank's hand is a bunch of burn. Okay, well, the good news is when someone takes a bit of time, I've said this before, I'll say it again, it means they at least don't have a very clear play. So I think that uh, this could at least be difficult. It doesn't always mean it's going to be good for you. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's, a, it's a difficult play that someone figures out and, uh, you know, they get to a, a, sick, a sick play, but it does mean it's not like, Oh, okay, Entomb, or Through the Breach, Archon, or Entomb Atroxa, or in, in Reanimated, or I guess it would be Archon, whatever. It's not something like that. I'd be surprised if that's what happens next. I think what might happen next is like, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen next, but I don't think it's going to be some easy, like, easy peasy, I'm going to put a giant thing into play very, you know, very quickly, because Aromatic is in the tank here. Okay. What we got? What we got, amigo? Yogmoth's will. Oh, I love that. That being the play is awesome. Probe again. You're at twelve. Don't play a swamp, please. And then cast explore. So Yogmoth's will is a draw too, but it costs you two life. Okay, I am in for that. If, if Iomatic doesn't play a land this turn, I think we're in great shape. No land, no land, no black land. Okay. No, two black lands. Okay. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling Hank that they got to draw uh, Force Negation. That's the card we want to see. No. Yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> I was going to say, like, Oh, if you attack and they block, you could arc trail both. But uh, I guess Gitaxian Probe means you, you, they know what's up. Okay. Huh? Bobble it up. Send with Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, go from there. I guess you you get to attack with the pyromancer, put you to ten. Yeah, interesting choices here. Mm. Okay, what do we got? Is this arc trail? Nugging. And tack. And then we've got chain lightning on the wall. Okay, okay, okay. So 10 threatening, six points of damage out of the. with fiery confluence in hand still. This is an Una's Prowler. Into something else. Oh no, persist on the wall of roots. Okay. We're okay with that. We are okay with that. Mm. And we send block the pyro. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with fiery confluence in hand, I like I like our spot. Pyro is good here. Okay, take two. You're eight. Fiery confluence. Hank. 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 Nug you, and then now I think even a even an archon does not necessarily do it. Didn't crack the peatland. Maybe play a terastodon. Is that what's happening here? Nope, cracking peatland. I think we got this. I think we got this after the char draw. Yeah, we did it. Hand is Archon, Kroxa, Raghavan, Sphinx of the Steel Wind. Oh, and that is the draft. Oh, what an exciting finish. I'm really glad I got to show you that match. Really cool. The Gear Hulk char draw and everything. All right, so we won our draft. I am stoked. Even though I wish I had done better than 1 2, I'll take the dub. And uh, at the end of the day, this deck was okay, but it needed to play against slightly different matchups for it to really shine. That'll do it for this draft. Come back tomorrow for another equally or more exciting one. Probably less draws uh, and going to game fours, but you never know. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you uh, spending the time to hang out and watch some cube with me. It's my favorite thing to do, and I'm glad I get to share it with y'all. I will see you next time, and until then, uh, <laughs> watch out for those game fours. They could be tricky.